uh, dear audience, I would like to pre present my PhD thesis, which is the investigation of the link between different diseases from the aspect of the oral microbiome. My name is Zuzanna Domokos. I work at the Department of Community Dentistry. My vision is to develop interdisciplinary knowledge by investigating the association between dental and systematic diseases and improve the treatment bo involving both dentists and medical doctors. My mission is to incorporate multidisciplinary attitude into clinical practice based on a comprehensive knowledge. Uh, my specific goals in order to fulfill my mission is to carry out a meta-analysis investigating the association between systematic and dental diseases, and I would also like to improve the diagnostic and the follow-up method of periodontal patients. The title of my first meta-analysis is the investigation of the association between different multifactorial diseases, periodontal disease, and inflammatory bowel diseases. According to different epidemiological studies, periodontitis was the most common oral condition in the world. Some kind of periodontal disease can affect 20 to 50% of the adult population. However, severe periodontal disease can affect 10% of the adult population, which is one of the major causes for tooth loss. Moreover, periodontitis is not only an oral condition, but it can cause coronary heart disease, preterm birth, or even stroke, so it can even cause the death of the patient. We know that there are several risk factors for developing periodontitis. Some of the most well-known are poor oral hygiene and smoking. But it is also proven that there are systematic diseases which are risk factors for developing periodontitis. These are like diabetes mellitus and hematologic disorders. And our main question is that if maybe inflammatory bowel diseases could be a risk factor for developing periodontitis, and also in the other way around, per, uh, a periodontitis might also be a risk factor for developing IBD. As both diseases are multifactorial, investigating the possible association between them could widen our knowledge and also improve the interdisciplinary treatment of these diseases. The aim of this study is to investigate the association between periodontitis and IBD from both directions and identify a possible risk population in dentistry. The clinical question is that is there an association between periodontitis and IBD? To answer the question, we will apply two PECOs to investigate it from both directions. You can see the systematic search which was made on October with the following search key. After the flowchart of selection, we found 14 eligible articles. Uh, as a primary outcome, we will compare the odds of periodontitis in IBD patient and in non-IBD patient, and we will get odds ratio values. Uh, in this first, uh, for, uh, first but you can see uh, th that we compared the odds for developing periodontitis in IBD patients and in non-IBD patients. Uh, the odds ratio val value was 2.65. The heterogeneity was 0%, which means that the population was quite homogeneous. Uh, this 2.65 odds ratio value means that if in the healthy uh, patients the odds for developing periodontitis is 1, then it is 2.65 in the IBD population, which means that uh, the odds for developing periodontitis in their case is 2.65 times higher than in the healthy population. So the conclusion is that IBD patients have higher chance to develop periodontitis than healthy patients. A subgroup analysis, we did this both separately for ulcerative colitis patients and Crohn's disease patients, which I will show you in the following slides. In this slide, you will see the difference between Crohn's disease patients compared with healthy patients. Here, the odds ratio is quite similar, 3.10. And in the case of ulcerative colitis patients, the odds ratio is 2.60. Uh, so we can conclude that in every, all three cases, uh, they investigated separately, but and also IBD patients together have a higher chance to develop periodontitis. The main strengths uh, of this evaluation that we use high quality studies. To our best knowledge, this is the first Hungarian study investigating the association between IBD and periodontitis. And uh, we uh, use different studies, which uh, use different populations from all over the world. Uh, the biggest limitation of this evaluation, uh, that investigating this topic, we could not use any RCTs, uh, so this association does not prove a cause relationship association alone. A secondary outcome, uh, we measured the available uh, clinical periodontal outcomes. The two most common ones which are used are the probing packet depth and clinical attachment loss. Both of them are measured in millimeters by this periodontal probe, as you can see on the picture. 
Here I will show you uh, the forest plot showing the difference in PPD results between healthy population and IBD patients. The mean difference between them was 0.26 millimeter. Although uh, this is statistically a significant difference in the clinic, it does not have a real relevance. Uh, you can see on the picture that uh, this difference is so small that it cannot even be measured in the clinics. We did this, uh, the same for the clinical attachment loss. Uh, the results were quite similar. The difference was 0.62, which does not, uh, not have a clinical relevance in this case either. Uh, the strengths of this evaluation that we still use high quality studies and the biggest limitation that we uh, had very low number of studies and the main reason for this that the, the, the measurement methods were not standardized so uh, only three of them could be used uh, for this evaluation. Uh, here I show you that we finished the risk of bias assessment. We, show, uh, we used the Newcastle Ottawa scale. In the case of case control studies, we had moderate or high quality studies. And in the case of cohort studies, we had uh, high quality studies. As a summary, we could conclude that IBD patients have a higher chance to develop periodontitis than healthy patients. As an implication for practice, we should mention uh, that we should bring multidisciplinary attitude in the treatment of IBD patients. Both gastroenterologists and dentists should be aware of this association, and they should emphasize the importance of regular dental checkups and prevention in their cases even more than in the healthy population. As an implication for research, we should mention that uh, both diseases are multifactorial diseases and we do not fully understand the full pathogenesis of these diseases. So investigating the reason for their association, we might find some common immunological or genetical pathways or some common behavioral or environmental risk factors which would improve the treatment of these diseases. And uh, for uh, the clinics, we should mention uh, that the periodontal examination should be done in a standardized way, so in the future uh, we, can co uh, we can carry out a meta-analysis in this topic with more studies. As I have mentioned, we will apply two PECOs, uh, but investigating the other way around association, we could find only two uh, studies, that's why it will be in the systematic review part. And the, the title of our second meta-analysis is the association between matrix metalloproteinase 8 and clinical parameters in periodontitis. Periodontal diseases are destructive processes involving the periodontium, which is the supporting apparatus of the tooth. Uh, here on this picture and on the table, you can see uh, the parameters of the healthy periodontium. But in the case of gingivitis, the biggest difference is that uh, we get uh, bleeding when probing, but there is no uh, radiological or clinical attachment loss. However, in the case of periodontitis, uh, we can see both radiological and clinical attachment loss. In 2016, uh, a new classification of periodontal and perimplant diseases and conditions was introduced, and this uses different stages and grades uh, to write the periodontitis. And why we chose the matrix metalloproteinase 8 in our study? Uh, histologically, in the healthy gingiva, we cannot see any inflammatory cells, but and then there are only a few uh, PMN cells. But only after four days of some uh, disturbing factors, like not brushing the tooth, uh, PM and leukocytes appear in the gingiva and the collagen analysis starts. Uh, this starts histologically, but the clinical signs of the disease come only later, as you can see on the picture. But there is an enzyme, the matrix metalloproteinase 8, uh, which can be measured uh, even before the clinical signs of the disease appear. Uh, this is a, the MMP8 is a collagenolytic enzyme, it causes periodontal degeneration and in active periodontal diseases the pathological elevation and activation of MMP8 uh, was seen. Uh, and this elevation can be seen in oral fluids, but the most important that it can be measured from the saliva, which is an easy way to measure. The aim of this study is to compare how the level of uh, activated MMPA changes in periodontally healthy patients and in different stages and grades of periodontitis. We will compare the reliability of uh, MMPA8 level measurement with conventional clinical and radiological diagnosis of periodontitis. The clinical question of the study that is the measuring the level of activated MMP8 is a reliable method to diagnose periodontitis and how does it change in the different stages and grades of periodontitis and you can see the PICO which we will apply. The clinical implication of this study is to use a novel, simple and convenient method to diagnose and follow up the clinical stage of periodontitis. And on this picture you can see a preliminary search key which we applied in February. And thank you for your attention.
Thank you for the presentation. You have really interesting topics. I have a question about the first one. You said that there's only an association between periodontitis and IBD, and I'm interested in that you included two studies in the qualitative synthesis that can you assume a direction of this association? Uh, yes, they both two studies show a positive association between them. Uh, so more studies are needed to improve this with a higher statistical uh, level. Or that can you make an assumption like peri periodontitis could be uh, like an early marker of IBD or IBD causes periodontitis? I know it's just associations, I, but yeah. can you assume a direction of this? Uh, we can say there is a positive association between them, but I wouldn't conclude this because both of them are multifactor and there are several factors that could affect them, but uh, they seem to be associated in both directions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the great presentation. I have a question regarding your second topic. Uh, how do you measure MMP8? Uh, does it need a laboratory? Uh, as I have mentioned, uh, they are in the different oral fluids. The most important one that it can be measured from the saliva, and there are different ways to measure it. Uh, you can also measure it in the laboratory with machines, but there are also chair side techniques, so it could be a very easy way uh, to use it in the common uh, everyday life of dentistry. What is the, do you have information regarding the etiology of disease? Because the periodontitis have a several different reasons, and so what is the reason, the pre-existing reason? And also, do you have a chance to do some subgroup analysis based on the etiology or disease classification? Because there might be some necrotizing disease or like implement-related periodontitis, and this is the first question. The second one is, how do you identify MMP as a tissue-specific or saliva-specific biomarkers? Because we can also test this MMP to in other kind of disease. And so, yeah. So thank thank you. you for both questions. Um, first, I will answer for the MMP question. Uh, yes, uh, MMP8 can uh, appear in every uh, process uh, that involves collagen releases, uh, but uh, when we have a periodontitis, this is an oral disease, uh, then we could be quite sure that that's what, for the reason in the saliva from this. I'm sure that may be measured from some other place uh, that would have another reason. And uh, for your first question regarding the IBD and periodontitis, uh, as I have mentioned that there might be some genetic, common genetical and immunological factor, there are different studies which investigated, for example, like uh, different uh, gene mutations uh, that uh, were common in both diseases. So these might be different uh, ways uh, to investigate them more. So there might be some common uh, pathways in them. And these are very new ways in, for science to investigate them. 